Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Reina. If you're new here, then welcome. As you guys may know, it was holiday seasons now. So the sales was quite crazy ever since Black Friday or even before that. And this year, because of pandemic, there's a lot of extra sales was going on. So I did, did a few sessions <laughs> of shopping and I did receive quite a lot of parcels. There are still some sort of delayed because of everything and they seem to change their warehouses or something. But Today I've got all the skincares and a bit of makeup that I purchased over the last month or so. A lot of these skincares are going to be featured in the future videos in 2021. A lot of them are sunscreens and there are mineral sunscreens. So I thought I'd just show you guys everything I bought and just share the excitement. And so you guys know what's going to happen in 2021. I'm sure it's not all of it, definitely, but some good idea. Without further ado, let's just dive into it. I've got this whole box here. I'm gonna pop it in front of me because it's way too heavy. <clears throat> First up, I've got a bunch of sunscreen that I need to show you. I've picked up eventually the ones that you guys are recommending, the Cancer Console Kids Zinc Sunscreen. So this one is a pure mineral sunscreen, got 20% of zinc oxide. I've also got another of their zinc one, is their Face Day Wear Moisturizer Matte Zinc Lotion. This one's got 27% zinc oxide as well. And there are a few more zinc ones, I believe. This is the one that I purchased from Kohl's. This is Ethical Zinc Natural Clear Zinc Sunscreen SPF 50 Plus. This one contains 22% natural zinc oxide and is also certified natural zinc oxide. I don't know the difference between natural and lab ingredient, but seems to be a really good one. Um, other zinc ones here, it's a Natural Instinct Tinted Face Natural Sunscreen SPF 30. This one's got 22%. And I've got another natural one. Natural Instinct Invisible Natural Sunscreen SPF 30. There's a lot of naturals going on. And I'm also going to do a video dig into Australian sunscreen regulation. That is the TGA Therapeutic Goods Administration. I've got 10 basic questions that you need to know because I didn't know a lot of the information until I done that study and I figure it was a lot of misleading or myths that I wasn't actually knowing that wasn't regulated by TGA. My camera just gave up on me because it was out of storage, like the same car was full. So we were talking about all those zinc um, mineral sunscreen. I've got a couple more to show you. One is from Milk and Co. I believe this is brand. This is a Protect Me SPF 30 plus sunscreen and it's suitable for a baby over three months or older. So a lot of this mineral sunscreen I end up finding in the baby section, like baby skincare. So I guess that's one of the reasons why I couldn't find them before because I was going through the regular sunscreen um, aisle but it was actually in the baby skincare. I haven't been shopping baby skincare since my sister is way too old now. So this one is got 22% um, of zinc oxide as well. Here I've got another two more of baby mineral sunscreens. One is from Walnut Natural Sunscreen SPF 30. The other is from the Little Innocent Sun Lotion Natural Mother and Baby SPF 30. I've actually got one more here. It's the Ichi Baby Cole Natural Sunscreen SPF 30. This one's got 22.5% zinc oxide. I'm gonna test all these mineral sunscreens out separately and there's gonna be a video for that. And a lot of these are very suitable for kids. So I guess it's a chapter dedicated for baby skin as well. And now I've got a few more sunscreens, but they're not mineral ones. I know, I'm purchasing a lot, but I'm actually loving this because I can see we have a lot of options when I purchase. And a lot of these actually work fairly okay but there are ones that work like way better so that is why we're doing the review here so these are the Bundy Sense Hydro UV Protective SPF 50 plus this is their new launch I believe I've got in the spray lotion bottle and this is for I think this is for the body yeah because I've got a lot of um, sunscreen for the face I'm actually gonna try a few for the body and these seems to be using up fairly quickly compared to the tube that we use on the face and that is why I picked this one up I figured these two are gonna be very similar the body and the face one when I look at it uh, active ingredients are exactly the same uh, but the texture wise it's gonna be slightly different the face one's gonna be more thicker 
I've got another face product from Bondi Sense. This is their Daily Moisturizing Face SPF 50 Plus, and this is a fragrance free version. Loving fragrance free. There are a few more over here. This is the Sun Sense Sensitive Visible Screen SPF 50 Plus. A lot of you guys were recommending this to me, or at least the brand. So I'm just gonna buy one of the products to test it out first, and then I'll dive into the brand and test it more. The other one I've got is from uh, 11 Pro's Sunscreen Lotion SPF 50. This is the same brand where they had that 40 Fathom Regener Rative cream that cream. I'm really loving it. So I'm doing a 2020 skincare like around that review that I recommend that we can purchase in Australia and they're all at like drugstore price That cream is going to be included in that video and I and that is also the reason I purchased their sunscreen when I was scrolling I saw they have a sunscreen I'm like yes, I am all for it. There's another mineral sunscreen There's this is from Mugu. I think that's how you say the name natural sunscreen SPF 40 this is the one uh, one of you guys recommended to me and I searched it online and I can found it at Priceline and a few other like local drugstore but I figured Priceline is the one that we can all have the access so yeah keen to try this one out adding on to the list I believe this is the last sunscreen product this is the Avin uh, antioxidant Unifying Care SPF 30. There's a lot of French on it and there's no way that I understand. So I believe this, this is one a... that is contain SPF and it's got a tint and is suitable for sensitive skins who is prone to redness, which I do have redness all around. So I'm really keen to try this one out. So that was everything in the sun care pile and now we're just gonna dive into skincare I actually don't have a lot I've only purchased a few products which will get me ready for the uh, January skincare brand review and this is the Thursday plantation tea tree uh, angst control kit they have three products in here I feel it's a good size for me to try and I can give you guys my feelings without wasting too much of the product if even if I don't like it. So they're giving me a full size of tea tray face wash. I really like a tea tray face wash. And they're also having one of these tea tray medicated gel for acne. That sounds pretty good. I've got acne's actually all the time for various reasons. And they've also included a tea tray face cream and this is like a 65 gram size. And I'm planning to pick up a few more of their uh, tea tray line but I figure I'll purchase them in store and then I'll have a look see what else they've got to actually get me a almost a full face. I figure this brand Thursday Plantation won't actually having a whole line for skincare routine which is also good that I can test out some other Aussie brands that who's only have a few products that I'm interested in so that's these ones and I've also got from the same brand a makeup product I thought I'd just mention together this is a Thursday plantation tea tree concealer blemish stick with manuka honey so it's a really uh, interesting concept it's saying it's a triple action formula for uh, acne prone skins which it prevents acne by drying out pimples and blackheads also conceals blemishes spots and imperfections plus it reduces the appearances of acne scars I tried it today the first time and I have to say I don't think it giving me a lot of coverages but it wasn't steam because I tried it under my eyes although I don't have any issues under my eye but I just using it as a concealer uh, it wasn't giving me the coverage but it wasn't steam I figure I just need to give it a couple more tries maybe use it before I put on any of my foundation as a prep step see if that works better in terms of trading and also concealing so yeah but this is an interesting finding I didn't know the brand is actually coming up with makeup related products other skincare product I've got oh I've got another one this is also from the Thursday plantation this is the tea tree and witch hazel toner so this will add into that skincare review for January which will be available probably in February 2021 oh my gosh my plans are going so far ahead the other product I've got here is the Neutrogena rapid tone repair day moisturizer and it has SPF 15 this is the one that's having um, retinoid plus vitamin C. Although when I had a look over the ingredient list, I think uh, ascorbic acid is far down in their ingredient list. 
Um, do they have any other ones? Retinoid is actually pretty good in the middle or one third of their ingredient list, but vitamin C is the the fourth last ingredient. I'm like, mm, really? I am actually doing a full review of all the moisturizers having SPF to test it out. Which one that? I prefer in case you don't have the time to do a sunscreen during that day because anything involving with SPF can cause peeling, stinging, all those terrible reactions. So I'm doing that and that's why I purchased this. I think that's everything for my skincare. Literally, most of my skincare during this haul is for the sunscreen, which is for the next year. So I'm, I'm actually very, very excited, but I also pick up a few makeups for sure. Like, who am I? The first one is just a return purchase. It's this Maybelline uh, New York eyelid makeup remover. I used up a couple bottles I just ran out recently. So I just thought, well, time to stock up another one when it's on half price sale for $2, $3. It's really good. It removes the eye makeup so well and it's not too oily. And when I applied this on my lips, I didn't notice such a stinging or, you know, terrible taste or anything it's just very gentle and it, it removes everything perfectly and for such affordable price and the bottle i love these bottle you can take it for travel and you don't feel like taking a lot of spaces at all um, other makeup products are this Revlon Red Photo Ready Rose Glow Hydrating and Illuminating Primer. I bought this one because Jessica Brown said it is a dupe for the Wonder Beauty Primer. I use it on this half of my face under my makeup. Um, I actually can't tell the difference between this half and this half. So I might have to try this out a few times because I don't really like the dropper and they have like a... I don't know if you can tell, it has like pearl beans within and it didn't work well for me so I don't know how to make it work or what it's supposed to for. So yeah, I need to try and play with this a little bit more but I really like the scent. So on this half of my face, the primer that I use is the Max Factor Miracle Prep. I actually like this one a bit better. It's just like a traditional, easy to use, hydrating and with a little bit of illuminating primer. It feels quite rich when you blend it out so I'm gonna have a video test all this out separately so if you want to see the details reviews go check that video out please I'll leave it somewhere here and there I've got another primer from Revlon this is the prime plus so I got this whole set from Revlon at chemist warehouse when they have a half price sale that includes one of these primer and one of this really baby pink blush which I don't know if I'll be able to use it and also coming with their volumizing mascara that's not all of it and plus one of their what is called Revlon Kiss Glow Lip Oil so four products here together it was I believe under $20 on half price sale and I was really wanting to try the lip oil and the primer so if I purchase these two separately it cost me more than $20 so that's why I went for the whole set and I've tested out two of these products today my mascara is this one and my lip or your was this one and then it completely worn off these two to me are like 50 50 I like some aspects of it but it's not a perfect product for everyone obviously um, haven't tested these two out so I can't tell you other makeup that I'm wearing on my face today is my bronzer is this Sevi by designer brand graduating bronzer trio all three shades are shimmer which I don't like I figure at least one of them can be satin or matte finish but it actually turns out looking pretty good on my face. Uh, you do have to sort of blend it quickly and if you use one of the dark color too much, it might take you a little while to actually blend it. But yeah, I actually quite like it. And I've also used this Max Factor Radiant Lift Long Lasting Radiant Concealer under my eyes. It's definitely not the most high coverage ones, um, but it's actually quite hydrating. It says it's containing skincare ingredient vitamin C and vitamin E. I'm feeling not very heavy and it's not crazing a lot under my eye which I tend to get some creases all the time with all types of concealer so I'm actually quite liking it for my first day use uh, it's just not a high coverage one so it's just those light natural coverage and giving a little bit of radiant effect not too much it's not like glowing under your eyes which is good I don't want that under my eyes and I've also tested out a goodie but oldie. I mean, particularly if you're watching YouTube, it's been out forever. This is the Flower Beauty, what is called 
a blush balm. I've got in the color Bubbly, which is a wrong color. I would prefer their peachy color. So I've got in their pink one, and I thought it's gonna be so intense, but when I blend it out and dab it on my face, it's actually pretty okay. I mean, the color for my skin tone, and I can still wear it, I'm really impressed. And the formula is actually really, really nice. I don't really need to say more because there's tons of reviews for this out there. But I'm just happy that I pick it, even with a not so perfect matching color, still worked pretty well. Which makes me wanting to try their peachy shade even more. And I've got two Pixie Eye Glitter Eyeshadows, and they're liquid eyeshadows. I really have to uh, play with a little bit. I don't know if you can tell, but there's a lot of uh, glitters under my eyes. So this one, the light color, it's a pure glitter, which I tested out my hand and I know it instantly. So I wasn't using any of this today. I'm glad. And this one, when I swatch it, is having a good dark pigmentation, like the color it shows in the bottle. So I thought it's one of those normal liquid eyeshadow with a hint of glitter in it because when I swatched it, it wasn't showing up much of the glitter but when I applied on my eye and I did a couple like application to build up this color in my outer corner what happened was left a lot of glitter but not so much of the color like I still see the color but there is more glitter than the color that I want on my eye and it's really hard to get rid of them they are literally staying sticking on my face so if you're someone loving glitter, then yeah, definitely try these out. If you're someone still learning and experiencing, I would suggest you do your eyes first. So if you make any mistakes, you can easily wash it off. Or just play gently, carefully. Like what I did today, it was a bad example. A few more other stuff. Oh, I haven't said what foundation I've been putting on today, seriously. And the one I've been testing today is also from Max Factor, is their Healthy Skin Harmony Miracle Foundation SPF 20. I've got in the color Light Ivory. I don't think it's been oxidizing a lot, particularly in front of the camera. But yeah, if you're wondering, it is oxidizing a tiny bit. And for setting spray, the one that I use it on my face today is from Sevy by Designer Brands, their Healthy Glow Mist. Actually, quite liking it. It's very moisturizing and give you a nice glow, but the sprayer bottle, oh my gosh, it's so strong. I, I really need to change into another bottle if I really want to enjoy this. If I don't mind, then it's fine. But if you do and you are pretty critical in terms of the sprays bottle here, consider change to a different bottle, the one that you love and pour it in because this is terrible in terms of around here. The product itself is good, so, you know, that's what happens when it's a drugstore product. It sort of just, you know, take off one star from that really high quality performance. I've got another glowing setting spray. You can tell a lot of these products I bought during this whole, like, glowing, healthy glow, hydrating, illuminating. It's, it's what I'm into at the moment. This is the L'Oreal Shake and Glow setting spray. There's so many people raved. I don't even know how many. Like, more than half of the YouTubers that I followed are recommending this, and I was never thinking picking up until recently when I start getting into the whole idea of glow, healthy, shine, luminous. So finally picked this up, haven't tried it yet, feel like it's gonna be perfect for summer. So that's that one. And is that everything? Oh no, actually, I've got one last stuff that I have to show you. The one last product I have to show you is from Makeup Forever. It's their multi-purpose sparkling powder diamond powder in the color star lit i got this at tk max recently i just been to melbourne recently after nine months of being in regional victoria because i work in a hospital i try not to go to melbourne because you get asked every day when you go to work and you have to fill out the form if you've been to so long story short try not to and now we can so i went there and this was for four dollars ten percent of their retail price I've actually got one of these purchased myself way back when I was still in high school, I believe. When I first introduced to loose powder, diamond powder, I know Makeup Forever is making good ones. And when I saw this, I'm like, I have to get it. If they have more shades, I'm gonna get all of them, but this is the only one they've got in the store. So I pick it up, I'm like, it's such a good bargain. I haven't tested it out. Um, but I'm, you know, just buying some really affordable and the product that you used to love and, you know, calling as a holy grail just make me so happy. 
Okay, so that concludes everything in today's shopping haul. I hope you guys all enjoyed watching this. Sometimes I love watching shopping hauls when I'm like folding laundries or cleaning a little bit. You know, just doing boring stuff and I watch these videos um, next to me, not necessarily watching it but listening to it and just shared excitement. Also trying to figure out if there are some good deals at the moment that I will keep an eye on it and pick it up like the Makeup Forever powder. Now if I go to TK Maxx, TK Maxx, TK, TJ, TK Maxx, I'll definitely go check on their makeup aisle. I do think some of the products are pretty good and some of the products it was actually available in New Zealand that you can pick it up from there as well. Well, that is everything for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel and leave all your comments down below what you've purchased recently. If there's some good deals, let me know so I can spend some more money and feels like saving more. I hope you all have all had a great day and let's enjoy some lovely weather outside and enjoy some lovely holidays. If you are watching this at the end of this year, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I'm sure I'll see you guys very soon in my next video. Bye!